At the beginning of 1945, despite losing the war, the Nazis still colonized some parts of Europe, including Denmark. In Denmark, the Nazis formed a special force called EPO. This special force group consisted of the rebellion group from Denmark who betrayed their own country and was assigned the task of capturing war heroes. In order to exterminate EPO, the government of Denmark secretly sent a letter to England asking for help to bomb Hippo's headquarters in Copenhagen. In an early morning in a village in Denmark, three beautiful girls were chatting inside a car when suddenly, a British fighter plane passed on top of them and rained the cars with gunfire. Everyone inside lost their lives. After the plane left, a boy named Henry who happened to be passing by, driven by curiosity, approached the destroyed car and checked the passengers. The victim's dead bodies were horribly injured. The scene shocked him so much and traumatized him so badly. He then ran away as fast as he can from the scene. The next day, Henry's mother took him to the hospital. Since the incident, Henry was severely traumatized. The child's psychology was badly shaken, so bad he became mute. The doctor tried to provide therapy for him, starting from saying things that could calm him down to scolding him all out. But instead of getting better, Henry instead cried. On the other side, in the city of Copenhagen, a girl named Eva was waiting for her mother in front of the bookstore. Not so long after, she saw a man shot dead right in the head across the street in front of her eyes. She was shocked she couldn't do anything and stunned in place. Luckily, her mother came and immediately took her away from there. A few days passed. Henry, along with his mother, went to the city of Copenhagen to meet his aunt. After explaining the incident that made her son mute, Henry's mother asked for help so that he would be allowed to live and study there. His mother hoped that if Henry lived far away from the place that built up his trauma, maybe he could forget and recover from his trauma. Not long after, his cousin, Rigmore, approached him because she overheard the conversation between her mother and Henry's mother. She tried to calm him down and said that she would help to recover Henry from his trauma. Two days later, Rigmore, Eva, and Henry went to school together. It turned out that Eva was Rigmore's classmate. Along the way to school, Rigmore told Henry that Eva had also experienced the same thing as him. She said that if Eva was still able to talk, Henry would also too. When they arrived at school, Henry's face suddenly turned pale because he saw a cloud shaped like a plane. Rigmore knew that Henry was scared. She then took out the rope she brought from home. While tying the rope to Henry, Rigmore said that Henry must be brave to face his fears. Rigmore then asked Eva to push Henry while she pulled him with the rope. Even though he was scared, thanks to the support of his two new friends, Henry managed to make it to school. At the British Air Force military base, it was seen that two pilots had just returned from their duties. While walking to the commander's office, the commander and general came and asked if the two pilots were the person in charge of shooting the Nazi leader's car a few days ago. If it was right, it meant that they had failed their mission because the car they shot at that time was not a Nazi leader's car but a taxi with three Danish girls inside. That news shocked the pilots. The next day, one of the pilots from yesterday was listening to directions for a new mission. This time, the mission was to attack the hippo headquarters in the city of Copenhagen, which will be carried out the next day. The pilot was still shaken and felt guilty about the previous incident. He was severely traumatized but the task was a task and no matter what happened, they had to finish it at their best. In the afternoon on the streets of Copenhagen, a nun named Teresa saw four EPO members beating up a Danish citizen who opposed the Nazis. Besides being a nun, Teresa was also a teacher at the school where Eva, Henry, and Rigmore were studying. One of the hippo officers named Frederick approached Teresa. Teresa, without any hesitation, called him evil. She said that if he didn't repent for his sins, sooner or later he would burn in hell. In the middle of that, another nun came and hastily dragged her away. The next day, while Sister Teresa was teaching in the class, Rigmore asked if God also took a nap like humans. Sister Teresa jokingly answered that God might not take a nap, but if so, God's nap might be completely different from humans. God's naps could be very rare, so rare that if God took a nap for a mere second, the world might collapse entirely. Hearing that answer, the students laughed. After school, when Sister Teresa was about to lock the church gates, Frederick came there saying that since he was threatened with what Sister Teresa said last time, he kept thinking about it. He knew that his decision to join the hippo was wrong, even though he knew that, if he ended up leaving the special forces, he would be punished by the Nazis and would be considered a traitor to them, but to atone for his sins, Frederick swore that tomorrow, he would divulge all the secret information of hippo to the Danish government. But before that, Frederick asked Sister Teresa a request that he want to be taught how to pray to God. Sister Teresa was touched and then invited Frederick into the church then taught him to pray. The next morning, the hippo headquarters bombing mission arrived at the British military air base. The pilots prepared to go to their fighter planes, including the two pilots who at that time missed their target during a mission and resulted in killing three innocent Danish women. Shortly after, they were all ready to leave for the mission. The mission began. In Copenhagen, Eva's father was annoyed that Eva didn't eat her breakfast. To make her eat her breakfast, her father said that if she didn't eat, she would die, but Eva still didn't touch her food because she was upset. Eva's father hit the table in anger. While holding back her tears, Eva ran away from there. 
That afternoon at school, Eva, Rigmore, Henry, and the other students were seen practicing drama. During the practice, Eva was seen holding back a stomach ache. The nun who saw it ordered the students to stop and then asked Henry to accompany Eva to take a rest. On the other side, the British fighter plane had arrived in Denmark. From the radio, the commander explained the assault strategy. To avoid getting tracked by the enemy, the radio had to be turned off after the instructions. Upon arrival in the city of Copenhagen, the first plane would bomb the Hippo headquarters building as a sign for the other planes to target the building and avoid mistargeting. After the instructions were finished, the radio from the base was turned off immediately. When the planes arrived in Copenhagen city, according to the strategy described before, all the pilots turned off their radios. The first plane then started bombing the Hippo headquarters building. At the same time, due to the thick fog, two pilots accidentally hit the tower near the Hippo headquarters and lost control. They ended up hitting Sister Teresa's school. The two pilots died. On the other hand, the other pilots who saw thick smoke from the school thought that the building was Hippo's headquarters. They began bombarding the building without any hesitation. Inside the school, all people trapped couldn't get out to evacuate. Sister Teresa and the other nuns then immediately took the students to shelter in the basement. Hearing the sound of bombs still falling on the building made all the students scream in fear. At the same time, after throwing away their hippo uniform, Frederick planned to meet Sister Teresa, but on the way, from a distance, he was shocked to see British fighter planes that attack the school where Sister Teresa teaches. Not only that, the parents who heard the sound of the bombing got panicked and ran straight to the school including Rigmore's and Eva's families. The British military commander who just realized that his men missed the right target hurriedly ordered them to retreat. When everyone arrived at the school, the building was already crumbling apart. The fire departments also came to help evacuate the victims outside of the school. Henry made it without the slightest injury but due to the incredibly terrifying incident, his trauma relapsed. Fortunately, one of the firefighters came to snap him out of his trauma. Henry then was asked to write down the names and characteristics of the students who survived the attack and then took his notes to the theater room where the parents gathered to wait for the news of their children. Henry nodded. Even though it was difficult because he couldn't speak, he kept trying to finish his job by writing down some of the names of the children. Henry handed the list of names to the nuns in the theater room, but the nun was still in shock. Instead, she gave the list again and asked Henry to read it himself in front of the parents. Since he had no other choice, even though he stuttered, he managed to read the list of names, until finally, he could read the names fluently. Inside the crumbled building, Sister Teresa survived the incident, even though her body was trapped under the debris. Not long after, she heard Rigmore's voice calling for her name from the rubbles below her. She was relieved. She then tried her best to scream for help. Rigmore told her that her place was flooded with water, Sister Teresa then told her to raise her head so that the water wouldn't enter her mouth, but with a whimpering tone, Rigmore said that she couldn't move her head because her mouth was punctured by an iron rod and penetrated her lower jaw. While holding back pain, Rigmore asked Sister Teresa if God was taking a nap at that moment. After that, her voice was gone. Sister Teresa couldn't do anything but cry. Minutes passed. No one came to help. Even though they were desperate. Sister Teresa kept screaming for help. On the outside, while looking for his daughter, Rigmore's father heard a voice from the rubble under the school. He then asked Frederick to check for it. On his way digging the rubbles, he could hear Sister Teresa's screams more clearly. When he saw water below him, he rushed out and then looked for a big hose to suck all the water. When he got the hose, he went back inside. Finally, he made it to where Sister Teresa was, but her face looked pale. She desperately looked at the water below while continuing to call out for Rigmore's name. Shaken by what had happened to her, she decided to commit suicide. In the theater, Eva's father said sorry repeatedly. If only he could turn back time and know that today was his last day with his little princess that he loved so much, he would never yell at her, just because she didn't want to eat her breakfast. Eva's mother was silent and then went away to calm down. Outside, she met Henry. She then asked if there was any news about her daughter. Henry innocently replied that Eva had already returned home. Hearing Henry's words just now, she seemed as if she had a glimmer of hope. With all her might, she ran, ran, and kept running, hoping that what Henry just said was true. She prayed to God that her daughter was safe until when she got home, she was so relieved to see her beloved daughter eating her breakfast this morning at the dining table. 